Hi, this is David with David's Tutorials, and today I'm going to show you the best way I found to capture a part of your computer screen as an image, and best of all, it's free! But before we get into that, there are a few things I need to share with you. If you'd like to skip ahead to the introduction to the video, go to this time right here, or if you want to get to the meat of the tutorial, go to this time right here. But for now, here's some new information. It's been more than three weeks since I posted a video here on David's Tutorials, and the reason for that is I've had a major computer crash. Thankfully, I had a backup computer, and even more thankfully, I had almost everything I needed to keep backed up. I've been a computer professional for more than 30 years now, and I have always preached on the necessity of keeping backups. Way back when dinosaurs roamed the earth, and when my subjects were operating on DOS-based computers. Anybody out there remember what a DOS-based computer is? My subjects would ask me, how often do I need to back up my work? And I would always tell them, back it up whenever you've done so much work that you can't stand to lose it and have to do it over. The same thing applies today to computer backups. You need to back up your computer, everything on it, only as often as you can't stand to lose it. If you don't mind losing it, then you don't need to do any backups. You can just install all your programs and start over. But if you've got things on there that you need to keep, such as your documents, such as your family document scan, such as emails, such as photographs, you better back it up. It's not a question of, is my computer going to crash? It's going to be, when is it going to crash? I can tell you from experience, it always happens. So I'm taking this opportunity to urge everybody watching to be sure you are making regular backups. Back up those things you can't stand to lose. If you would like me to make another tutorial on the backup methods I'm using myself, I'll be happy to do that. Just let me know in the comment section down below. With it having been more than three weeks since I made one of these tutorials, I've got a lot of words built up inside me, so please bear with me if I seem to get a little bit wordy in this one, okay? And now, on with the tutorial. Screen captures made easy. Personal computers crept onto the scene in the late 1970s, but they burst into wide usage in the 1980s, and since then, they have become revolutionary in today's society. They are as much revolutionary as any technology has ever been. Electricity, the telephone, the automobile, all of these are revolutionary technologies, but computers, they have been revolutionizing every bit as much. One of the biggest impacts computers have had is on communications. And as you know, those people, companies, societies, organizations with the best communication, the quickest communication, the most efficient communication, the most open communication are always the most successful. Today, especially in what I like to call first world societies, more people have access to computers than don't. And those people who have access to computers use them extensively for communications. Emails, social media, creating documents, even the phone you have in your hand is a computer as well as a communications device. So if you want to be more successful in everything you try to do, then you need to improve your communication skills as much as you can. We have basically three kinds of communications. We've got the audio, we've got the visual, and we've got the combination, the audio, visual, or AV. One of the best ways to improve the effectiveness of your visual and your AV communications is to use pictures or illustrations, images within these documents. Since a huge proportion of the images and illustrations we would like to use in our communications comes up on our computer screens, we need an easy way to capture what's on our computer screen and be able to put it into our documents, into our emails, into our AV communications. So now I'm going to show you that easy way to do it. The technique I'm about to show you works well on a PC and on a Mac. I haven't yet tried it on a mobile device, so if you're using a mobile device and you try this technique, please let us know in the comments section down below how well it works for you. 
The program I'm going to use to capture my screen images is the free image program Irfan View. It works well on a PC. It works well on a Mac. I can go on rapturously about why I really like this program, but this particular tutorial is about screen captures. And if you'd like me to go into more detail about using Irfan View, let me know in the comment section down below, and I'll sure see about putting up another tutorial on that program. When I know I'll be needing to capture a part of my screen, for example, to put into a video like this one, the first thing I do is start Irfan View. I have the program pinned to my Windows 10 taskbar, so to start the program, all I have to do is click the icon. This will bring up the program with an empty work area. I then put the program into capture mode by pressing the C key. You can also start the capture mode by using the menu selection Options, Capture, Slash Screenshot. Either will get you there. When you first start Irfan View's Capture Mode, you will see the Capture Setup dialog. In this dialog, you can set your capture area, you can set the capture method, the capture options, and you can decide what to do with the image after you make the capture. Let's look at each of these sections in more detail. First, let's set the capture area. In this section of the dialog, you can set how much of your screen you want to capture. Each of the options is pretty much self-explanatory, but you can play around with each one of them to see which one you like the best or which one you need to change to at any given time. Just remember, you can bring up this dialog in Irfan View anytime you like by pressing the C key when Irfan View is active. C for capture. My preference just about always is option number five, the custom rectangle. I'll demonstrate this in a moment. In the Capture Method section of the dialog, you can set your hotkey and whether you want your capture to start by hotkey or on a timer delay. To set your hotkey, select that radio button, click in the hotkey field, and press the keystrokes you would like to use to initiate the capture. My preference on this is Control Numpad Plus. I would rather have used the print screen key with a modifier such as the control key but this program doesn't seem to register that for me. In the Options section of the dialog, I always like to check the Include Mouse Cursor checkbox, because most of my screen captures are for demonstrations and tutorials, and I always like to show folks where the mouse cursor is in demos. If I don't want to include the mouse cursor in any particular capture, I simply move it out of the capture area before initiating the capture. I have not used the other options in this section, but it looks like you could have a great deal of fun playing around with them, perhaps capturing a complete long web page or taking a series of captures every few seconds while you do a task. If you've played around with these options and know more about them, feel free to tell us about it down in the comment section below. In the final section, after the capture, you decide what to do with the image once you have it. All of the options in this section are again nicely self-explanatory but the one I use the most is to send the captured image to the clipboard. This allows me to paste it wherever I like, which is usually either in a Word document or in an email. Occasionally, I will save a captured image as a file, but what I usually do in this case is to paste it into a Word document and then select Save It As Picture. I'll demonstrate that in a few minutes. This makes it so I don't have to keep changing the configuration of the program. Once you have everything set up, Click on the Start button and you'll be ready to execute your first screen capture. If you don't want to do a screen capture right away, simply press the Escape key and that will abort this particular capture. But the great thing is that now Irfan View is armed for capture. And you can minimize the program to the taskbar and start a new capture at any time by pressing the hotkeys you set up earlier. Follow along with me now as I execute a screen capture, save it as a file, and load it into my video production software to include in this very tutorial. You have already seen how I have started Irfan View, armed it for capture, and minimized the program to the taskbar. Now let's say I'm doing a tutorial on Microsoft Excel, and I want to show a screenshot of where to type a formula. First, I bring up Excel, click on the cell I want, and put the cursor pointer in the area where I want it to be when the viewers of the captured image look at it. Once everything is set up, I simply press my hotkeys. In this case, remember I set it up as Control, Numpad, Plus. I move to one corner of the area I want to capture, 
and click. And you can see the capture boundaries appear on the screen. I then move to the other corner. Notice how we get immediate feedback on the size of the captured region. So if you want to capture an area of, say, 640 by 480 or 1280 by 720, you can do so. When I get the area I want to capture enclosed in the capture boundaries, I click a second time, and presto, that area is now captured onto my clipboard. I can now move over to my Word document where I want to embed this image, put my text cursor where I want the image to appear, and press Ctrl-V to paste the image. And there it is. Pasting an image into an email is just as easy depending on your email client. I know from experience it works well in Outlook, in the web interface for Gmail, and it also works in the internet email client RoundCube. Because I also want this image to appear in this video, I need to also save it as a file. So with the image pasted into the Word document, I now right click on the image and select Save Image As in the context menu and make sure I'm saving it to the right destination with an understandable file name. I'm going to call this Demo and select the format, usually JPEG, and click Save. I then add that image to the video during post-processing, and there it is! Adding pictures or images to your documents, to your emails, to your websites, to your videos will make them much more effective, and now you know how to do it. Not only free, but easy as well. Now please pardon me for a second while I change into some new clothes so I can film the next tutorial. I hope this video has been helpful and now you'll be able to use screen captures in your own emails, in your own documents, in your own websites, and in your own videos. Please let us know down in the comments how well you think this helped you. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to give us a great big old thumbs up to let the YouTube robots know that you thought it was a helpful one. And if you're not already a subscriber, please click on that subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified whenever we post another great tutorial here on David's Tutorials.